Trastuit Tavarich and welcome to Wargame European Escalation. I'm Hob Gadling and will be playing through the single play campaign second mission Pursuit. We'll need some more units, the losses have been heavy. So we'll unlock some supply trucks, some scouts. and most importantly more tanks. T-55s are the earlier models of T-62s and T-72s are the later generation of T-62 tanks. Functionally they are identical, identical. T-55s are of course older while and T-72s are newer. We need a little more artillery and especially rocket artillery. The cubes are surface to air anti air missile systems. Um, I'm unlocking them just to be safe. The poles seem to have an affinity for helicopters, so better to be safe than sorry. Uh, couple more hind gun ships and some more units will round out our peaks. East German troops put on alert at the border at the beginning of the uprising are now ordered to enter Poland to help quash the rebellion. Polish rebels, motivated but poorly coordinated, are defeated in a series of hopeless skirmishes. A revolutionary government finally emerges in Katowice, which tries to reorganize forces on the Vestula. For the Soviet forces, the objective is now to put out of action as many enemies as possible before they can reach this powerful defensive line. The enemy has gathered its forces around Plock and is holding the refinery. By capturing the town of Biala, we will secure enough supplies to eliminate the enemy on this side of the refinery. And here we are. Our mission is to clear the entrance to refinery within 30 minutes. To do that, the plan is simple. I'm going to order two waves in. First, the older T-55s will have to clear out the center area. Since there's a town in the objective, I'm also calling in a number of Motostrelki infantry squads with their BMPs and ZSU 234 anti-air guns or Shilkas as the nickname goes. The Shilkas have four 23mm autocannons each so they'll shred any aircraft, any helicopters and any light units they'll get in range of. I've called in slightly over two companies, almost a full battalion of troops here. Yeah. It'll take a while for them to arrive, so while I'm waiting for them, I'll take a look around the map. The refinery can be seen. It can't be reached yet, but it's the huge urban area on the map. The Poles will of course try to hold our advance towards center. No matter, a couple missile teams or a few tanks have no chances of holding us. 
Still, I'm going to call in a couple of scouts to better sniff out any ambushes along the road. Also, I've called in some artillery. The RM-70 rocket launcher systems will lay down suppressive fire on the village at center. The artillery pieces will also join the bombardment. few Polish APCs. Not much, not much yet. I'll drop in a pre-planned bombardment and when the enemy is stunned I'll make my approach to center, take off, take the objective area. That should make the units at the village sufficiently unhappy. Now I'll push forward with my BMPs, unload the infantry near the village and sweep up the whole objective. A couple of FOBs that I'll try to capture intact if at all possible. I can use the supplies for my rocket artillery and other vehicles. Fielding a battalion worth of vehicles eats up fuel and ammo like crazy. I'm gonna need all the extra supplies I can get. Looks like the Poles are trying to flank us. Unfortunately, T-64s are no match for T-80s, which are the top-of-the-line tank for Soviet Union. I'm, I'm trying to save up my best units for the final scenarios. I'm only using second-line troops here to complete the easier tasks, and if and only if the more experienced and better quality troops are needed, only then shall I consider using them. Looks like we have the village. I still need to sweep the top of the hill that's within center area. The tanks I have I'm going to send forward to cover the bridge. I don't want any enemy counterattack suddenly spoiling my plans here. That's our first casualties. Two Shilkas down to enemy missile teams. Still, we have the center sector and we still have over 20 minutes of time to push forward to Charlton. Uh, everything should be fine. I'm just going to secure my holdings on center, set up a defensive perimeter and push my artillery forward. Also, the objective area Dimitri looks promising. I'm trying to push forward with my infantry. If at all possible, I'd like to take and hold the objective with my infantry company. Uh, 
first of all to stop any enemy counterattacks to my flank and to hold a good defensive position, a good scouting position. As you can see it's at the base of a rather large hill. If I can get scouts on top of that hill I should be able to get eyes on Chariton pretty comfortably. Of course, the most well-led plans don't always work out, and looks like Dimitri is heavily defended. We'll have to fight for it, so I'll order more bombardments in as soon as the rockets and guns are loaded. Infantry has to join the fight and stop the enemy armor trying to cross the bridge. If they get close to my BMPs, I'm going to lose the fight near Dimitri. This, of course, means extreme casualties to my infantry, which is unprotected and in a bad position. Sometimes you have to make sacrifices for the greater good. It looks like we are under attack from multiple directions at once. I'm most concerned about the attack near Dimitri. Looks like uh, Polish gun gunships have joined the fight there. This is, ga is a good example of the computer's play in war game. I was expecting the gunships to support the tanks coming coming over the bridge at the other side of center. The computer decided against it and now I don't have any Shilkas or other anti-air units in the area. In fact, I don't have anything with any anti-air capability. I'll have to call in the Shilkas from other places to hold hold back the Polish assault. I've al also called in a Kub surface-to-air missile launcher to join in the defense. But Unfortunately, looks like looks like he's not gonna make it. And we are coming under attack from yet another direction. Some infantry left holding the buildings here would have been useful. Alas have to call in whatever units I have at center to push back the attack. Otherwise, otherwise they'll get to my artillery, my FOBs, my CV and all is lost. The single Shilka is doing a hell of a job against the pole helicopters. That's yet another helicopter down. One helicopter left. Looks like we'll be able to hold near Dimitri. Meanwhile, my own gunships are taking out the last of the enemy artillery that c 
controlled the road from Boris to Cha uh, Senta. I don't have a spotter for my rocket artillery, so the impact radius is rather large. That's too much of a radius to be of any use, so I'll just drop another another salvo of rockets to Dimitri and try to take over it. This is probably the last of the enemy forces. Six ATGM carriers. My helicopter gunships should be able to deal with them comfortably. A few infantry ATGM teams ambushed one of our BMPs. I'm just gonna call in fire support from my artillery right on top of them. I should have noted that my hind helicopters are in trouble. I can clearly hear the sound of a ZSU-57-2. I lose both of my gunships in just seconds. And there's still one ATGM carrier left. I'll have to push forward quickly with my remaining tank and either drive it away or take it out. The Polish Ur Ural trucks are no threat to anything, so if they want to drive forward and be captured, that's fine with me. A quick tally of my remaining troops. Of the 15 T-55 tanks I called in, we now have four left. Infantry is dead almost to a man, and most of the BMPs are also gone. My artillery, however, is in good shape, and we, have, we are yet to call in any of our good units. Also, our T-80 tanks are fine. Looks like the last defenders of Dimitri gave up when we approached the area with our tanks. That's good. Now I have control of the hill on the left side of map. I can get a scout on top of it, try to sniff out enemy units. And we still have 15 minutes to push forward to Char Chariton. It's gonna be a bit tight. I can't do it with the units I have available. I need to call in reinforcements and wait for them to arrive before I can actually do anything. While my reinforcements are en route, I might as well redeploy the units at Dimitri and call in bombardment fires on the other side of the bridge. It's possible there's no one at the other side of the bridge. At least my scout doesn't detect anything, but I don't really care. Ammunition is cheap, tanks are expensive. The last infantry squad I have av available at center is sent forward 
to secure a position and see if there are any enemy tanks near the bridge. I don't want to try and cross a choke point if I can obviously spot a large number of enemy troops. So I'm going to send a lone so, uh, sacrificial scout to the other side and see if anyone tries to open fire at it. I do have T-72s and T-80s arriving to this scene about now, so I don't see any reason in waiting. I'll just have to drive over quickly and take out anything directly on the other side of the bridge. The Spadokroniarce troopers are Polish paratroopers. They are elite units and can do a hell of a lot of damage to tanks, so it's a good thing, thing they are taken out quickly. Our positions are not much on the other side of the bridge yet, so once again we'll have to win with superior firepower. I'm halting my tanks here and calling in extra artillery as much as the guns can possibly shoot. another one of my tanks down. I can scarcely afford any casualties now. I'm on a strict time limit. I need to reach Chariton within 10 minutes or all is lost. Looks like the enemy is trying to flank us around uh, Dimitri. Fortunately, I have a good amount of units ava available to stop the counterattack. I'd like some more ammunition for my T-55s, however, but as it is, they'll act as a speed bump while I drop even more artillery on top of the attackers. I need more units to attack Chariton, so I'm calling in all my recoilless rifle jeeps. They are unarmored jeeps armed with what is essentially a large bazooka. You can make your own guesses on what the casualty lists usually look like when you have to push forward against tanks with units like that. Looks like the enemy still has hind gunships available to him. Fortunately, I have a couple of shilkas at location. Now it's going to be a duel whether I can get within shooting range before the gunships target and take out my remaining anti-air. If I lose my anti-air here, it's going to be hard to push past, past the gunships, gunship defenses without taking heavy losses. and it looks like the gunships get the first volley off. I'm 
badly badly placed here one of my shilkas is stunned and the last unstunned vehicle gets destroyed my only available option is charging in with my T-72s and hoping that their heavy machine guns can if not destroy then at least drive away the enemy gunships I'm to, going to stop in the forest. The gunships will have a hard time shooting back at my units while I'm directly underne underneath them. Gunships have to give give way to my tanks. Looks like we get lucky and manage to shoot them down. Also, the Poles attempted counterattack at the Dimitri Hill is now mostly halted. I'm going to push forward with my units, join the main attack on Chariton. I probably should call in some resupplies. My T-55s, the remaining couple that I have, are out of ammunition. I don't have anything that can kill the last Polish T-62 at range, so I'm going to have to order an infantry charge and hope that someone with an RPG makes it. The recallless rifle jeeps will have to join the fight. One of them manages to sneak in a lucky shot and take out the T-62. That's good news for us. We have less than five minutes now to push the attack home. I'm calling in artillery on Chariton. I don't see anyone there. But, once again, I don't care. I'm just going to shoot as much into the zone as I possibly can and worry about it later. The Poles have held some armor in reserve. I'll have to deal with them before I can move on. Fortunately, for once, my munitions are rather well positioned to handle a counterattack. Looks like the enemy also has considerable ATGM reserves at Chariton, so I'm going to. Uh, keep shooting with my artillery, hope that e if even one shell lands close enough to the enemy ATGM carriers, they'll be stunned and I can drive in close enough to take them out. close, but not close enough. Here's hoping we get the lucky shot. I'm out of time, so I'll have to order the charge now and take whatever casualties that means. My T-80s are down, my T-55s are down. I only have recoilless rifle jeeps that are practically out of ammunition. A couple T-62s and some infantry. 
And there's finally the lucky strike we have been waiting for. The enemy missile units are now stunned and now I can order a, a charge right next to them. This range guns have a huge advantage against missiles, so I should be able to mop up. And there's the last enemy. The battle for Plok has worn down much of the rebel forces, breaking their hopes of holding the Vistula line. victory, but at what cost? We achieved all our objectives and as usual the kill lists are handsome. Each tank in my forces has killed at least two enemy vehicles and several have killed way, way more than that. The artillery pieces also did quite well, killing almost a dozen enemy units each. The losses I have are severe. I'm going to need more units to be able to continue the campaign. This has been Wargame European Escalation single player. This is Hope Gadling signing out. Peace.